Hey, what's up guys? Tony here, and what you're watching is some squad deathmatch on Zimba Tower. And what I'm doing in this video, and actually what I've been doing the entire this last week or so it seems like, is I've been working on double XP stuff. I, I don't know about you guys, I don't know if rank matters for you guys in Battlefield, but... For me, you know what, it's about playing and just enjoying, and I know some people, they have their, their goal-oriented kind of people, and they, they have this need to get up certain to certain ranks and certain levels, you know, you get the people who in Call of Duty, they want to be the max prestige for whatever Call of Duty they're playing, and uh, that's their goal, and I know there's already max prestige people out there, and I know I did that video, gosh, a while back now. Uh, about whether or not I had prestige and I've gotten up to level 55 in Black Ops 2 and I'm sitting there and I can prestige and I'm sort of on the the cliff the prestige cliff and I'm like do I want to take that jump you know uh, I don't know <laughs> and that's something I don't have to worry about in Battlefield but what I've noticed recently is that especially with the double XP weekend or the week that we've had what I've noticed is that I actually have this interest to get to level 50. That was kind of my little mini goal this week is to get to level 50. And I'm about to do it. I'm like 49 and a half right now. But uh, I just, I'm sitting here going, huh. Like, what? why is it such a big deal to get up to that higher level? You know, to get to 50, be halfway to 100. I don't think I'll ever reach 100. Just like I've never reached max prestige on any Call of Duty game. And it's just because I don't put enough time into the game uh, to do it. And it's not as if I don't have this inkling to do it. You know, I, I do. It would be cool to be a level 100 colonel, you know. There's uh, there's something about it. You know, you just see a level 100 and you know that person has put in so much time into the game that they're a good player. And I guess that's really what it is, is that your rank denotes your the perceived uh, value of you as a player on that game or your perceived level of skill by the whatever rank you carry. So if you see someone who's, you know, low rank, you know, before a colonel rank, you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm with a bunch of noobs. They don't know how to play the game. They don't know how to fly. They don't know how to drive a tank. They don't, they, they barely probably know how to shoot their gun. That's kind of like what you think, which is, can be a false statement. You couldn't, cause I mean, I, I've got several PSNs. I've got like three at least that I, that I have played before and that are linked to my battle log. And so for me to be a level two, doesn't mean that I'm a shitty player because I'm a level 49 colonel on my main one. So the person behind the gamer tag or the person behind the rank isn't necessarily doesn't mean that they're a complete scrub or a complete noob. But uh, but it but it gets you thinking. You know when you see this, you know you're playing uh, and you're like, oh man, why am I on the team with all the lower ranking people when the other team is full of high ranking people? Like oh, we're gonna get our butts kicked. And it's just this automatic assumption. So. Anyways, it's just kind of something that I thought about and it, because I'm right here on the precipice of rank 50, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm halfway there. Um, it just got me thinking about ranking up, you know, and then just the whole idea of what do ranks mean uh, to other people? And what do they tell other people? I mean, like I said, it's pretty clear that it gives someone this idea of your level of skill. And I mean, it doesn't necessarily, you know, and that's the funny thing is because people have this, with Colonel 100s, people automatically assume like, oh, they are so good. They have to be to a certain level of skill or, you know, skill level. Uh, but really all it means is they've spent a lot of time playing the game. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily good or great. They're just spending a lot of time playing Battlefield. So, it, it, but anyways, it's just like I said, it's just something that I had thought about. Um... But the one thing I actually do want to talk about is this idea that I've noticed, and I've had this, and I think for me what it's been, uh, for me the, the issue that I've been having is that I've been really grinding in the game. And I don't really like to grind in any game, like when I was playing DC uh, very heavily during the summertime. I didn't like to grind, I didn't like to go get gear, I didn't like to play the same missions over and over and over and over again to get gear. That's just that I just didn't like farming for gear. To get to the next level, I just I liked a steady progression, and um, just getting there as I get there. It's a very lazy fair sort of way that I like to do things, you know. Just kind of floating along, little hands off, you know. It'll, it'll happen when it happens. That's kind of the way it is. I mean, I guess it's different. I mean, for guns and stuff, you know, you want to get attachments if you've never used a gun, so you kind of grind that out. And I hate that part, but I mean, it's just sort of necessary to get all your attachments. So. What I do enjoy is just sort of playing the game uh, for the sake of playing the game and for the sake of just enjoying yourself. 
And and that's the thing is, is I, I saw, I was like a level 47 or something before the double XP event started. And I saw myself, I'm like, I'd like to get to level 50. That was sort of my goal. I'm going to get to level 50. You know, and I started looking through battle log. And I started picking guns to use that I knew that I was close to getting a service star with. So I've been playing with a lot of different guns recently. And picking up service stars and getting service stars in jets and tanks and guns. Um, capping objective. I mean, it's, well, capping objective is not really anything new for me. But the thing is, though, is that it, it, I went out with the explicit intent to level up. And not necessarily play the game, you know. So there were a couple times where I was playing a couple matches of like conquest or whatever, um, and I didn't even touch an objective. I was just running around getting kills because I'm like, I need 25 kills for this gun, I need 35 kills for this gun, I need to get this um, assignment done. You know, the James Bond assignment. I was working on that one for a while, and then just the AS valve for whatever reason doesn't really sit with me. And I was just like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm not going to work on that one yet. I'll, that'll come as I play the game, which may never come because I'm not much of a fan of the AS foul. Um, or the silenced uh, was it MP443 but anyways what I had noticed and, I, and, and this is kind of what I was getting to in the beginning is that I here I am farming for these um, extra points you know I'm doing I'm doing things not for the sake of, of having fun with playing the game I'm doing it for the sake of how can I maximize the amount of points that I can get per match um, every time I play Battlefield so I can get up to level 50, you know. And so it's taken the fun out of it for me the last week or so because I've just been grinding this stuff out. And I woke up this morning, I was looking at Twitter, and, and all I, I saw a couple of people talking about, well, I'm not really, like, having fun playing Battlefield right now, so I think I'm going to put it down. Snoob's one of those guys. And it's funny because I thought about that yesterday, too. I was playing yesterday, of course, and I was kind of feeling, I was like, I'm not really feeling Battlefield, you know. I've been, those, those of you guys who... Uh, I've been seeing what I've been doing on, on the PlayStation, have, have known that I've been playing a lot of DC sometimes at night. I'll play Battlefield, play DC. I picked up a couple of used games recently. Um, picked up that uh, IL-2 game, the Birds of Prey, the Struken Coffin, or, or <laughs> I can't pronounce it, whatever game it is. And I, uh, I've i been playing that a little bit, kind of here and there. And, in you know, I'm looking at a stack of games I have, and I got sports games and, you know, playing some football and thinking about football and stuff. So then I'm sitting here going, well, I got so much, so many of things I could do with my time. I don't really have to sit here and farm. And I find myself in that mode. I'm like what Snoop said. He's just kind of like, doesn't feel like playing Battlefield. And it, it's not that I don't like Battlefield. It's not that um, Battlefield isn't fun for me and I feel like doing something else. Uh, I think what it is for me is that the first person shooters are getting a little stale. And maybe it's just the, like the online multiplayer aspect of it. Because I still have the Doom Let's Play that I have to get on, and a lot of, a lot of the fact that, because of the fact that I've been playing a lot of Battlefield, I haven't really been touching Doom because I've been spending all that time playing Battlefield and you know just enjoying that time instead of playing Doom in, in single player games and campaigns and stuff. And so I'm finding that like, man, my time feels like it's stale. I don't know why, and I want to know if you guys feel that same way. Do you guys feel that? You know, after a certain amount of time, and I touch on this topic probably every six months. Six months, it seems like. But do you guys feel you get that point where a game feels stale, or you need something different, um, or maybe it's just the, the genre in general? We we've been so overwhelmed, and the, the genre is so saturated with good shooters and bad shooters, and you know, cookie cutter shooters. Uh, and so it's like suddenly we're sitting here going, "I think we need something different. I think that the shooter genre itself." needs to change a little bit and I know a lot of people are looking at that um oh goodness there's that there's a game out it's like a massive multiplayer you know it's like a, a first person shooter MMO you know where what you do in a day's event changes the world the entire world at large and uh, and I find that completely fascinating and, and it'll be interesting to see where games go in like the next 10 years as far as shooters because could you imagine playing a game where you know, whatever you do that day has an impact upon the entire environment, the entire world where you go in and say you, your, your group takes this base and there's like a global world map, you know, when you log in, it's like a global world map and you're like, okay, you know, the A's versus the B's or whatever. So A took this part of this world. So the B's need to counterattack. It would be like a digital world, a world war, you know, where there's real consequences and perhaps a real end to a, a conflict like if one group just sort of steamrolls the other group and they get all the way to the capital or whatever and they could take it I mean so I think incorporating incorporating games on a larger scale than just um, 
say 12 or 64 people, you know, and then having it reach out to a larger sort of giving it a more global appeal or giving it more of a like an overall uh, reason for fighting, right? You could pick a faction or something. And it was kind of like a mag thing. You know, mag was like, let's pick factions and there's 200 and something players on per side or whatever. And it just didn't pan out. The execution wasn't that, that great. I think it just had to do with because they couldn't balance like players versus graphics and gameplay wasn't spot on. And anyways, the point is that I'm kind of rambling, but the point is, is that the way I see it is that, that no matter what, and I know that some people are talking about in game already for Battlefield 3, and they're like, oh, well, in game they're going to bring Capture the Flag. And you're like, oh, cool, Capture the Flag, yeah. I mean, that's that's the good, you know, game mode to put into a first person shooter. It's a game mode that's it's been in a first person shooter forever. You know, same with Gun Game, and same with Conquest, and, or Domination, or what do you want to call it. Um, Rush, you know, these are game modes that we've played several times in different versions of Battlefield and, and all the versions of Call of Duty. And it just makes me wonder if it's, if there's not something else to do, eventually, there's got to be something else to do. Um, and I don't know what it is, and I'm just sort of free thinking right now, and that's why I'm kind of rambling a little bit, because I'm trying to visualize in my head what it is that I think would make an attractive shooter for more than just 12 months because here we are 14 months into Battlefield 3 and I know a lot of people are just kind of like ah you know Battlefield 3 you know it's uh, I don't really feel like playing it you know I mean does, does it does a new title really bring that that much new life into a game like when Battlefield 4 comes out are we just gonna be like oh my god Battlefield 4 I can't wait to play it you know what is Battlefield 4 gonna do that Battlefield 3 hasn't done already for us, you know? I mean, at least Bad Company 2 to Battlefield 3, you saw this change, and you can go prone. You're like, oh my god, I can go prone. This is awesome. The graphics look different. It was a different experience, at least I thought it was, from Bad Company 2. So it makes me wonder, what is Battlefield 4 going to look like, and what is Battlefield 4 going to do for us to revitalize us because I know I mean look there's there's hardcore players in every franchise and I, I, I say every but I'm gonna refer to just PlayStation right now so I'm gonna exclude um, uh, Halo from this but so Call of Duty and Battlefield I mean there's hardcore dedicated players in each one of these franchises and so you know they're gonna love the title no matter what you know it could be um, I don't know Medieval sword fighting or actually snoove is really getting into that right now, but you know you, you could have You know like squirt guns and people will just like oh battlefield squirt guns is awesome, you know, and that's just it so Anyways, I guess sort of I'm gonna wrap this up cuz I'm, I'm kind of running out of steam here But the point is is that I'm, I'm kind of curious to know from you guys What do you think would make shooters last longer than 12 months? You know, like I said, I, I think that right now at the 14th month, 14th month mark, we're sort of running out of steam. And people are, I know they're going to probably end up pushing in-game up to, you know, February sometime just because it's, they pushed up Aftermath a month. And so I imagine they'll do that just to help people roll into Battlefield 4 later on. But I'm just kind of curious to know what, what, what should be done or what could be done or maybe some brainstorming, you know, just to get the, the, gray matter working again uh, what could be done to help revitalize the whole FPS genre not just Battlefield I don't really care about Battlefield or Call of Duty specifically or Halo specifically I, I just like the whole genre I mean things have been done already and I wonder what else could be done like what could be what could give greater meaning to the game or to the experience than just playing match to match to match and you know comparing one person's stats to another person's stats and you know making people want to get to you know, you know, level 100, you know, what if there was no level cap? Well, I mean, that would be interesting, like an MMO or something. I don't know. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And sorry, I didn't put out a video pretty much all last week. I put out that one on Tuesday and then that was it. And so now here it is Monday again, almost a week later, I'm putting out a video. So anyways, guys, like I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow.